Okay, so we're live here with um, Kevin, myself, and Igor. Um, we hope to have Daniel on um, later on. Maybe uh, he's having some issues with the weather up in Boston area, the hurricane. Um, side effects are coming in that way, so he might not have power. Um, hopefully, we have and um, Andrew on as well. But right now, you just have me, Kate Dix, and Igor um, representing we bleed green um, nation and we're out here to answer any questions you may have dealing with what's going on. As we all know that Marcus Smart signed a contract extension. We know that uh, Tom Lewis signed a contract extension. Um, we know there's still talk about Bradley Bill coming to Boston. Um, there's still talk about Isaiah Thomas maybe coming to Boston. Um, there's a lot of talk going on, but no moving pieces going on right now. Um, what we'd like to know from you guys, um, for one, is give us your grade on how you felt uh, Brad Stevens had done so far with the team that he's built around Jason Tatum, um, Jalen Brown, and you might as well throw Marcus Smart in there as well because I don't know. I, I don't think Marcus is going anywhere in no time soon. Um, so I'm going to introduce Igor to you, and then we're going to go from there. Igor? Are you ready, my brother? Uh, from uh, another absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, uh, uh, Kevin. Thanks, and uh, Kevin. I just and want to say I just that, want to uh, say great introduction. Uh, great introduction. And I hope that Andy will join us. And I hope that uh, uh, Daniel as well. Uh, Daniel as well. Daniel as well. Daniel as well. So, so, like you said, so like you said, in Hurricane Massachusetts in Massachusetts, India. Massachusetts India. And he maybe and is he not having power. He's not having electricity power. right now. But you know, you know. I hope that every. Everything is all right, and is my, all right prayers, and my prayers for the people in Boston, the people process, in Boston that process, uh, all that, will be fine. Uh, all will be uh, fine. And of course, of course, uh, our, of course, dear, our dear Camacho. Dear Camacho. Uh, you mentioned uh, extensions. You mentioned uh, extensions. This is the reason why uh, we are assembled here. We assembled so, here. Uh, Boston so, Celtic Center, uh, Robert Williams, has agreed Robert on, the agreed on the four year, uh, 54 uh, million contract, contract extension. Uh, so, uh, Williams so deal puts so his salary deal puts in the top, top half of league centers. Uh, this, uh, this Uh, look like we lost Igor for a minute. Hope we can get him back on. Um, uh, oh man. Igor, are you there? Can you hear me? Uh, oh man. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm. Yep. I'm good. Okay. Now. I apologize. Okay. It's I about apologize. internet. It's about internet. In other news, in other news, Marcus 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 starting our starting point guard. Starting point guard. In the next season, in the next uh, season, he signed uh, he signed four years, four years, seven million deal. Seven million deal. That is starting that is Kevin at starting the end of Kevin the next the season, the next 2022, season 2022, 2022 June. So practically, we so have Marcus Marcus Mark for, Mark for, Mark for about five years. For about five years. Yam Madar, Yam Madar, uh, the Celtics speak. Uh, the Celtics speak. Uh, refused to a contract uh, with uh, Boston Celtics, uh, and he signs the three years the deal three years with Partizan Belgrade, Belgrade, Adriatic League, Adriatic League participant, participant, and also uh, and also Euro Cup um, participant, participant uh, with famous uh, coach Jelko Radović, uh, with the most uh, uh, Euroleague trophies uh, in history. Uh, in history. So, so uh look like we got ego going in and out right now hope we'll get oh, him back real Lord. soon oh, dear Lord. okay you're good you're good go ahead <laughs> okay you froze again <laughs> um, uh, okay loading. go ahead uh, okay Let's let's try with let's, mobile. Let's try with mobile. Try with mobile internet. Try with mobile internet. Maybe this is Maybe more stable. This is more stable. So Yam Yam so Madar, uh, Madar, Israel uh, second uh, rounder, Israel is to the Serbian is league. To Serbian league. And also, and I, also have, uh, I have news that, uh, news that um, one moment. Um, one moment. Uh, 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 Juan, uh, Juan Be Begarin. Be Begarin. He 
will he not be, will not in, be the in the Celtics as uniform as well. well. He resigns with, he Paris, resigns basketball. with Paris basketball. Juan Begarin. Juan but Begarin. Uh, we have but, uh, Sam Cossier on uh, our on, roster, uh, for, our the next roster for the next season. And when and you sum it up, sum it up Mr. Brett Stevens, Mr. New, Brad Stevens new Celtics president Celtics of uh, president basketball, of, uh, operations, basketball did, uh, operations did uh, this sum. Uh, so, uh, uh, can, can, so you, uh, can you? Yes, you can hear me. Yes, uh, he, can hear hired, me. Uh, he hired uh, Ime Udoka, uh, Ime Udoka, ex Spurs assistant ex -Spurs coach, assistant, uh, uh, coach uh, as uh, Celtics as head coach. Celtics he, head traded, coach. Uh, he traded away Kemba uh, Walker away and Tristan Thompson. And Tristan he Thompson. acquired he Al Horford and, and Josh Richards. He signed. He signs Kenter in his for veteran minimum. For veteran minimum. He signs. He signs. Uh, he signed. Uh, he signed uh, Dennis Schroeder. Uh, Dennis Lakers, uh, Lakers point guard uh, for part of mid-level exceptions. Five point nine million. Five point nine million. He extended Marcus Smart extended four, Marcus years, Mark, 77 four years. Seventy-seven million. Million. He signed and he traded. He signed uh, and traded. Uh, signed uh, and traded. Uh, signed and traded. Uh, uh, Fournier. And created 17.1 million traded player exception. Player exception. Okay. Um, uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, yes, finally, can. He uh, resigned finally, he resigned Robert Williams four Robert years, Williams, four years, fifty-four million, fifty-four million, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, we have the core. We have the core lock for four plus years, four plus next years, four plus years, next and this is obvious. And this is Marcus obvious. Mar Jalen Brown, Marcus Jason, Mar Jalen Tatum, Brown, Jason and Robert Tatum, Williams, and Robert Williams. Josh Richardson is expected, Richardson to, be is expected to, to be joined to the our starting core unit. to the starting unit. Then on the key then reserves, on the key uh, reserves, the bench, uh, the bench, uh, Kevin Becker, uh, uh, Dennis Schroeder, uh, Aaron Naismith, who is Aaron improved, Naismith, who is improved, Pey Peyton Pritchard, Pey Peyton Pritchard uh, who shined uh, in the summer league. Summer league. Romeo Langford, Romeo Langford, Chris Dunn, Chris Carson, Dunn Edwards, Carson Edwards, and Begarin will not be and with Begarin us. And will not be with us. Uh, in the front court, uh, Al in the front court, Al Horford, Grant Williams. Grant Williams. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. You're hearing me. You're good now. Uh, You're hearing me. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay. Horford, so, Grant Horford, Williams, Grant Williams, Jabari Parker, Jabari Inis Parker, Kenter, Inis Bruno, Kenter, Fernande, Bruno Fernando, Fernando, Sam Husier. Sam Husier. After, uh, After these moves, uh, these moves, before the moves, uh, the we moves, were projected uh, to we be like eight at the Eastern like Conference. Eight at the Eastern Conference. After these moves, After we are this projected moves, to be we fifth. We are projected to be fifth. Which means that we improved. Which means that we improved. And plus we have a rumor scheme that we will sign a guy, guy like, uh, guy Paul, like Mills. Uh, Paul Mills. And for the rookie and GM, for the rookie GM uh, it's not a uh, uh, bad, summer, not, uh, at bad all. summer at all for Brad Stevens. For Brad Stevens. I will express, I will my, express my reserves towards, reserves the, moves. towards the moves. But uh, you, but, must, uh, give Brad you Stevens, must give Brad Stevens um, um, applause for being brave for being to make, uh, to the make moves uh, that uh, even the moves Danny Ainge that, uh, even Danny was, not, was brave, not brave enough to brave, make. brave enough to make like trading trading like away trading, trading away Kemba Walker Kemba Walker. Uh, what do you say, Kevin? Uh, what do you say, Kevin? I, I I agree with you. I sure I, I, and that but. But you know, I think that behind the scenes, Danny does have something to do with all of this. I, I, I don't want to give Brad all the credit, um, 
but I'll give him some of the credit. Um, I think these might have been moves that Danny would have did if he would have stayed. Um, but um, I like everything. I like everything that Brad's doing. Um, he might be a better GM than he was a coach, and he was a hell of a coach. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's not the reason why. You know, he was never the reason why we never got over the hump. It's just that we just didn't have the players that we needed to get over the hump. Um, and that was Danny's. That, that was Danny's doing to get those players, get those certain players. But, um, but um, let's see here. Okay. But um, anyway, um, I like what I like what he's doing. Um, what I, I still have a problem with the Millsap situation because I would rather feel I would feel more comfortable. If Millsap said he's he would be interested in Boston and Boston being interested in him because everybody that Boston has been interested in that brought they brought the name up they have went and signed up with somebody else so I want to hear a player say I'm interested in going to Boston then I will take I, I I will I will take that with some validity that he has an interest in coming to Boston um, only person actually I heard that said he wouldn't he wants to come to Boston is Isaiah Thomas. Um, and we haven't really heard anything else about him. But if we were to get Millsap, I, I like that move as well. Um, we have players like um, we got Schrader who's come off the bench, which I'm really surprised that they um, talked him into coming off the bench, um, being mostly being a starter most of the time um, in the league. But that, but they're using that as a motivation factor for him because if he does what he's supposed to do. The next year he gonna get the, get a bag. Um, they bring Millsap in. Um, I'm trying to figure out where where does he fit as far as him playing. Does he come off the bench as well? Okay. So if that's the case, then he has some motivation um, to want to play at a high level as well. Um, I'm not I'm not hearing a lot of people want wanting Millsap. And I think Millsap is still. Uh, a valuable player in the NBA, I think it's just a system that he works in that's going to be – that makes him a better player. Um, I think him – when he left Denver, um, it was Utah. I can't remember who he was with before last year. But he played really well, and he didn't play that good this year This year past. So I think a lot of it has to do with the system that you play in that makes you that type of player. Um, and as we know, basically – if you look at all the players that Brad Stevens had underneath him when he first came to the league, most of them guys have been successful basketball players through the league. Um, you look at Crowder, you look at Avery Bradley, even though he was there before him, but he played underneath him. You had you had you had Crowder, Avery Bradley, you had uh, Olenek, you had um, uh, what's the other guy named that came up the bench? Uh, I can't think of his name right now. But you had a couple. You had some guys from Boston that filled rosters on other teams, you know, and you look at Jay Crowder, who's been in the finals the last two years. And, um, he came to us through a trade, um, as a throw in, and now he's excelling at the game of of basketball. So I think that if we do get Millsap, I think he will, I think Brad will put a system in there with the coach that make him excel as a basketball player. Um, and it's crazy how we went from, a play-in team this year to a fifth to to being fifth in 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 the conference. I mean, a fifth seed in in the playoffs. And the only thing we basically did was we added Schrader, okay, to a team that didn't have a point guard. And Schrader's not coming. Schrader's coming off the bench, so that gives him some motivation to be a better player down the line. Only question I have is: Do you think Igor? Do you think that that Chris Dunn is going to be a sell day before the season starts? Or do you think they're looking to trade him? Because I'm, I'm reading some things that they're trying to get rid of him as well. Um, they're trying to trade him. He was just a throw-in to that to that deal. But you're going to have a lot of point guards on the team because I don't know if Chris Dunn is going is, – is Chris Dunn is better than, than Pritchard. Um, and, you know, I haven't seen a lot of Chris Dunn. I saw, I saw him in college. Um, I didn't get a chance to see him in pros, but – I don't know if he 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 has a roster spot on the team. Um, same thing with um with Edwards. Um, them two guys are 
to me, they're both on a bubble as, as far as making the team because I think that once the preseason starts and they have um, the roster filled out, there may be somebody else out there that Brad Seasons may be looking for to replace one of those replace one or two of those guys on the team. So, but I, I, I think overall Brad Stevens has did a good job with the team going from eighth to fifth um, with just one or two moves. Um, and I, I don't think Boston's done yet. I really don't um, to, to build a team that they want to build for the future. Again, my only issue is I want to hear players say, I want to come to Boston. I will go to Boston and play instead of Boston saying I'm interested in them. That's my take, Igor. Okay, I really hope okay, that I uh, really hope that uh, my uh, internet my uh, will, internet will, will allow me to will, uh, el elab elaborate. Elab elaborate. I mean, I will I mean, first uh, I will say first about uh, Marcus say Smart about extension. Marcus Smart extension. Uh, signing, uh, signing uh, an extension to the shitty tall pet next cap space, next cap space basically of the table, basically of the table. Uh, creating uh, a large, creating uh, a large uh, traded TPE player exception, traded player exception, 17.1 million, 17.1 million. Uh, for sign and trade, uh, for sign and trade, Fournier, Fournier cleared it, uh, cleared it of, uh, um, of uh, dead pet and and tire. After resigning, Robert resigning, Williams, Robert we can say Williams, Kevin we that, can say uh, Kevin that uh, minimal chance, minimal chance, chance that existed. Chance that existed. Boston Celtics to create Boston Celtics to maximum create maximum salary spot, maximum salary spot in 2022. 2022. This is the most frequently, is the asked, most frequently, frequently asked, 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 question. asked question. Can we sign Bradley Can Bill, sign uh, Bradley Bill uh, as a free agent in 2022? Right now, you can, we, can right say now no. you can, we can say no. Uh, as a free agent. Uh, as Why? A free agent. Because, Why? We cannot, because it's we cannot, really hard. Really it would hard, be really hard, it would to really hard to create to the maximum create spot. The maximum spot. You will have to uh, will have basically, to, uh, uh, basically Kevin, uh, clear, uh, clear all the salaries, all the except, salaries except let's say let's Jason say, Tatum, uh, Jalen Brown, uh, Jill Richard Brown, and Naismith. Richard and, Naismith. and you will have like uh, will Tatum, have Brown, like, uh, Richard, Tatum Naismith, Brown, Richard, Naismith, and veteran and minimum and uh, rookie, minimum contracts. And, uh, rookie contracts. And you just extended and you just extended smart. Williams as smart. And it is giving you and it is giving uh, you really hard uh, pet, uh, really hard for, pet uh, for it. We didn't mention that Shemi uh, uh, signed with uh, the champs. Not hear me, obviously. Not hear me. Uh, oh, okay, so uh, we signed okay. Semi so we, signed we lost Semi uh, Semi to uh, the champions. So, uh, we lost you. Here, here, here I am. Here, here, okay. here I am. Okay, so, um, we lost Semi Ojule to um, the champs, uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, hope that you can hear me, or you cannot hear me. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, semi Ojule to the Bucks. Uh, so um, we extended Robert Williams uh, to the deal. Uh, now um, Boston currently is uh, before Williams is um, uh, signing uh, uh, was 6.6 .6 million over the uh, cap uh, into luxury tax. Uh, according to the um, Keith Smith, 6.6 .6 million over the luxury tax line before re-signing um, uh, Robert Williams. Uh, now, uh, Boston pro 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 projects, uh, projects to function as an over-the-cap team in summer of 2022, and that's just fine. Um, where the messing of avoiding the tax in 2021-22nd money will be spent in 2022nd 23rd didn't exactly uh, line up previously and it doesn't now because
Okay, look like we lost Igor again. Hopefully, we can get him back on the line. Oh, dear Lord. Igor, oh, dear Lord. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Turn to this one. Turn to this one. Okay, yeah, you're good. Okay, I'm hearing myself. Uh, I'm, I'm mentioning uh, that uh, Boston projects to function over the cap team in 2022. Um, and be, uh, we will be over the cap the next season. Uh, and uh, we can pursue the pricey sign and trades for the stars. Bradley Beal is Apple uh, in the uh, Boston fans eyes. Zach Lavin, Aaron Gordon, Yusuf Nurkic, Valenciunas. Uh, so it's not a banner unrestricted free agency class, but quality available as well. Uh, more interesting next summer should be the free agency market. For example, uh, free agents like uh, Jaren Jackson Jr. could be there. Uh, if the Suns uh, set a spending limit, Michael Bridges could be there. Colin Sexton uh, maybe is available. And uh, that's uh, even... Uh, uh, can you hear me, Kevin, by the way? Uh, okay, uh, so the free agency class is more intriguing, like I mentioned. Jared Jackson Jr. will be there if the Suns doesn't spend uh, on him. Uh, Michael Bridges, Colin Sexton. So we can add uh, some good names. Uh, so uh, before we even examine the traditional trade market, for example, Damian Lillard's situation is questionable. Carl uh, Anthony Towns and another star will be available, possible in 2022 summer. But uh, we will not talk about that. What Stevens has done is put Boston in position to be in the mix. The Celtics uh, still uh, have all the first round picks. They have got a mix of developing young guys, couple of wets, tradable. Uh, Horford will be uh, on pseudo expiring deal and expiring contracts are always movable like Horford's deal. None of this is guaranteed that Boston will be star hunting the next couple of years. Uh, Boston could take approach of viewing Tatum and Brown as the Looks like we lost them again. Um, try, we'll try to get them back. Uh, okay, go ahead, Igor. Uh, uh -huh. th thanks. Uh, so again, uh, it, uh, this is not guaranteed that we will be chasing the the the, the third star like Bill uh, Lillard or uh, whomever. Uh, so uh, we could take approach of uh, building uh, uh, around this core: Tatum, Brown, Smart, and Robert Williams. Uh, this is more uh, uh, more like slow approach, but it is what it is. Uh, the important thing is that Boston now uh, still have uh, the tools to do it. Uh, we have uh, trade exceptions like 17 millions, 9.7 millions, 5 millions. Um, so they cannot be combined, but uh, we can use 17 millions to bring the player uh, the short and long term of the Celtics were uh, were not bright to be um, a honest Kevin a couple of months ago but it improved so we improved our position and uh, we must give props to Stevens and his staff Danny Ainge was advisor obviously uh, the team Um, okay, I, I think look, we look like we lost him again because of the weather. Um, so basically, he was talking about uh, the trade exceptions and things of that nature with the Celtics. I, I, okay, we got Igor back. Igor, I got a, I okay. got a quick question for you. Okay. Um, with the 17 million trade exception, um, now explain to the fans how they can use that. Let, like, like, first of all, can they use their trade, that 17 million, to be part of a trade? to get Bradley Bill next season. Could that be part of the, could, could, could that 17 million be part of that? Because they yes. have a year to, to use yes. it, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Uh, uh, absolutely, 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 absolutely. 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 So uh, Boston so, uh, had, for example, 28.5 million, million trade exception. 
for Gordon Hayward. For Gordon and Hayward. Uh, we use and, it on uh, two players. It on uh, two players. You know, uh, uh, first you know, Fournier, uh, first and then Fournier, 11 million, uh, another, another part, uh, uh, part by which uh, we acquired which we Josh acquired Richards, Josh, uh, if Richards. I'm correct. If I'm correct. Uh, so, um, yeah. so um, uh, 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 the mechanism of uh, the, the rules, mechanism of uh, the rules, rules is that uh, rules you cannot is combine that, uh, the trade exceptions. Combine for example, trade exceptions. you cannot uh, combine uh, uh, 17 million uh, trade exception, 9.7 million trade exception, and 5 million trade exception, and to trade for Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, so um, uh, how uh, can we use it? Uh, we can combine. Um, okay. Uh, I hope. I think that you cannot hear me uh, as well, right? Oh man. But I can hear you. Uh, okay. I can hear you. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so okay. you uh, can uh, combine uh, 17 uh, million uh, trade exception uh, to uh, the rest of uh, outgoing salaries. Uh, for example, uh, Horford, uh, uh, Langford, uh, and another one uh, to uh, create like uh, 32 uh, uh, or 34 million uh, outgoing uh, salary and. Uh, perform sign and trade. Practically, um, that exception, like 17 million, uh, can be used as salary filler in the trade for Bradley Bill. Uh, you know, uh, uh, if we had like 28.5 million uh, exception right now, it would be even uh, easier to perform that. But uh, certainly, the trade exception is uh, making easier. Uh, Let's see. Let's see if we can get him back because he's giving us some good information there on the trade exceptions and how boss could use that to still, if they are interested in Bradley Bill, getting Bradley Bill um, to uh, maybe through a sign and trade. Um, and the reason why I brought that up because um, because of the money that they gave, they gave Marcus Smart and in Williams. That could be part of the trade if they wanted to do that. Um, so they still have that 17 million exception, uh, TPE, and you add, you maybe could combine those two players and you might be able to get, uh, Bradley Bill to come to Boston. But does that move, would that move the needle if you got rid of Tom Lord and Marcus Smart? I don't think it does because you're getting rid of the room protector and you're getting, you're getting rid of your best defensive player. Um, so I don't know how that would work. As far as what they what boss is trying to do, um, it basically got all of us in a holding pattern right now when it comes to what they're doing, um, with the trade exception and things of that nature. So I'm just looking at what's going on here. So um, these uh, we know that um, they. Let me see. This is 2021. So we're looking at player. I'll be looking at the player um, tracker, what they have here. Well, we know Fournay's no longer on the team. Um, we know Simi's not there no longer. Um, and we know Waters has gone. Okay, let me see if I can get Igor back on here again. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. All right, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, great. Now you can hear me, right? Now you can hear me, right? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, what, what, what I was what, trying what, to what say was... is that uh, this trade exception, 17 million, is going to help us if we are performing uh, sign and trade uh, for Bradley Bill with Washington Wizards. Uh, but the fans can... Forget about us signing after 
after Celtics resigns Martin Williams. People can forget about Boston Celtics sign Bradley Bill as free agent because it's obviously that it is hard, almost impossible scenario. Like I like I explained, we will be tax paying team, and we will not have a uh, room in the cap, and especially not room to sign maximum deal because we committed to this core. Tatum, Brown, William Smart. I don't have anything against it. Just uh, underline. Everybody else can be can be cleared. Uh, we mentioned Horford. You can stretch out Horford. You can trade away Horford. He will be on pseudo expiring deal. His movable contract. The other guys, uh, you have options on them. You know, you can always trade them. But uh, I don't know why you would trade the young uh, ch- guys on the cheap deals like Naismith, Pritchard, Langford, and the others. The other guys like uh, veterans like Richardson, uh, one or two year deals uh, with uh, team options. So in that department, we don't have problems. But uh, we will have to pursue the star we assign and trades using those trade exceptions and first round picks that we possess so to underline tpe 17 million 9.7 millions and 5 millions you can use for example 17 millions to acquire two players 7 millions and 10 million but you cannot combine the two tpes like 17 millions and 9.7 millions to create maximum contract. That's in short, in short notes. About Bradley Bill and situation, I would like to comment about that. A lot of rumors for now he's staying in Washington. I don't know how long he will stay in Washington because after Washington traded um, Westbrook to the Lakers, uh, I don't know, is Bradley Bill willing to stay and suck with Washington? Because he's a star. And every star wants to be in the playoffs, wants to be in the contending team, obviously. Boston is one of the prime destination for him. According to the rumors, he expressed the will to play with uh, uh, Jason Tatum, his mate. And he has connections with Jason Tatum from USA team and uh, from earlier. So we have really hopes uh, to persuade him. Uh, but uh, the ones that are really in charge of Bradley Bill are Washington Wizards. Now, in my opinion, because we need to um, trade for Bradley Bill, uh, the only guaranteed uh, a pet for Boston to acquire Bradley Bill right now, Kevin, if he becomes available, and I underline, if he becomes available, because many many teams uh, uh, ask Washington about Bradley Bill, and uh, they ca- kind of uh, set the price, but they didn't negotiate uh, for Bradley Bill right now. And Bradley Bill eventually is staying in Washington right now. So if he becomes available, if he requested trade or something, in my opinion, only way Boston to uh, be prime candidates for the bill, Kevin, is Bradley Bill to go full Anthony Davis. That means that he goes and say, I want to play for Boston. And I will not resign anywhere else. Do not trade for me. And then Washington will be forced to trade him to Boston. And they will be forced to uh, trade him for what we can offer. And that way we can pair Brown, Tatum, and potentially Bill. The problem is I don't see neither Bill, neither his agent to do that way, you know. Uh, he will probably put Boston to the list of preferable destinations. You know, uh, he will mention 
in the destinations that I want to play, I would resign and I would like to play for Los Angeles Lakers, Los Angeles Clippers, Boston, Miami, that way, for example, four or five teams. That's what I see. The other teams on the market that are interested, and for example, this summer you have interesting statement for Pat Riley, our arch rival, quote Pat Riley, if anybody is available on the trade market, be sure that Miami will be involved. In every single trade, big trade, be sure that Miami will be involved. Miami can offer, for example, uh, Duncan Ro uh, da Robinson, Tyler Hero. You know, the guys that were in the finals that are more established than our bench guys like Pritchard, like Naismith, and the guys. You know, uh, if we doesn't offer, uh, if, we, if we don't offer for Brown, and we don't want to offer Brown, because it doesn't make any sense to trade Brown for Bill, because they are more or less right now in the same tier, you know. And what are you doing for trading one player for another player. We can argue who is having higher ceiling, Brown or Bill. You know, Bill is maybe a better offensive player than Brown, but Brown is better defensive player, a better overall uh, player than uh, Bradley Bill, you know, and Brown is our, our Celtic. It doesn't make any sense. And, you know, I don't understand the fans that think that pairing Jason Tatum and Bradley Bill would make us instant contenders. Absolutely not. Uh, if we make trio of Bradley Bill, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown and surround them with enough uh, veterans on the bench, this is the only way how I see Boston to be top three teams in the Eastern Conference in the future. And Eastern Conference is improved especially top four teams. Even the teams in the middle that we are battling with right now, like Knicks, like Hawks, they are improved and they will not be easy competition. And people should not sleep on that. You know, Boston can be top four teams if other teams that are projected to be uh, a, a, a top four have problems, injuries, bad seasons. We can easily be top four teams. But we can easily slide to the play-in tournament if we are not cautious, you know, because the competition is improved, really improved, really improved. Um, uh, I will Igor, stop. Uh, I, I, I will stop. I got a question for you. Okay, so the situation with Bradley Bill, I think um, when you look at it from a fan's point of view, um, and you look at it from an organization point of view, I think there's always been a conversation between him and Jason Tatum about playing together. Um, um, their family is really, their, their mothers are really close, you know, they go on vacations together. So there's a bond there between those two, um, that I think is a possibility that Boston, <clears throat> Boston knows, the organization knows what, what it wants to do in the future. And I, and I, and I, again, I think that by them giving this contract extension to, to, uh, Williams and Mark Smart, they might be part of that. 17 plus those two guys may be going to Washington. Um, but the thing about it is, is that the coach that they have there is dealt as those are the players that he want to be able to coach. Because I think that having a rookie coach like they have in um in West 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 Anso, the junior or, or the third or whatever, I think they want to start him out fresh and they looking more so at draft picks um than players. So I think that. That might be the route they may go. They may say, you know, we're going to take our lumps like Houston's taking our lumps right now. But within two to three years, we should be better than what we are now. And we'll be able to compete at that point in time. So I think that and Bradley Bill is more I think Bradley Bill is more um, of a player that says to Washington, you know, I've asked you done. I've, I've done everything you asked me to do. Um, now I'm asking you to trade me to the Celtics. Um, or just let me walk. Um, would would Bradley Bill be willing to take a pay cut 
and not take a max contract to come to Boston is a question that you have, that that has to be asked. Um, because if you do a trade with him and you trade Marcus Smart and maybe Robert, Robert Williams, now you're losing your you're losing your rim protector and you're losing your best your best defensive player on the team. So uh, our fans need to understand that as well too. So I, there, there's definitely been a conversation because if if it wasn't a conversation, we wouldn't be hearing about it. <clears throat> I know everybody else out there is basically saying, um, like you said, Miami would be definitely in the running for him. But they trade him, like you said, they could, he could do it after Davis. He could say to them, "You can trade for me, but I'm not staying here." Um, it's not about the money. It's all about me trying to win a championship and playing with playing with my best, playing with my my little brother um, that I grew up with, um, and and Jason Tatum. So that might be the scenario with that situation. With the same thing with Anthony Davis, like you can trade me, but I'm going. I'm, I want to be in LA. It's simple as that, you know. So now I think you know you're not allowed to really talk about it anymore. Um, it's hush talk between the teams, but I think there's been a conversation with with. I think there's been a conversation with, with Boston and Washington on which way they want to go with um, Bradley Bill. The best thing about it is, though, if it's between the players, that's fine. But if it's the organization, if it's an organization thing, there might be some situations where there could be some tampering going on, like what's going on with Miami, it was going on with with, with the Bulls, um, and Tampa, and um, Toronto, and, and New Orleans. So we don't want to be in that situation that those teams were in. Um, so long as long as the players don't say anything publicly, and the organization not saying the same thing publicly, then we'll be fine. Um, Danny Ainge was good at hiding all of that from everybody, even though if you he underlined everything that he said, if you knew Danny Ainge as a GM, you knew exactly where he was going, what he was saying, but he just didn't say it, you know. So, hopefully, he taught Brad Stevens to do the same thing. And so far, Brad's been quiet. We've seen what he's done as far as the contracts are concerned, the, the space he has, the money he's made, um, the money that he's that the gap, the money that we have now, cap space. Um, I don't know what the cap is supposed to be projected be projected to be at the end of next season but i think it's going to be a big jump from where it is now to where it to where it is now to where it is next year only if our fans are allowed to go to the games um a hundred percent because right now i was supposed to be going out to la to watch the rams in in arizona play but now the nfl is saying that everybody has to wear a mask no matter if you're vaccinated or not so to me, I'm not taking that chance, so I'm not going. So that, so the coronavirus plays a part in the money that's being made with the NBA. So if the NBA can go full blown, 100% fans in the stadium, that cap that they're, they're projecting to be at is going is it, it'll benefit us. It, it's going to benefit all the teams, but it benefit fit us better because if we're in a, if we're in a situation to try to get Bradley Bill, then we have that cap space to do that. Um, but I think that. All the teams that have gotten better in, in the Eastern Conference, I think what we lost as a team was our defense, our defense identity. We lost that this year. Um, and I've always, we, we, you know, when we talked, I'm like, yo, our defense got to be better. Our defense got to be better. Our defense was not that good this year. Okay, so I'm looking for that defense to step up. And if their defense can play like they played before, then I think we are, we're, we're a top four team defensively okay offensively that's a different story because you got some moving pieces that's going to come in there that that has to adjust to playing with each other but again i think defensively if we can hold up our end of the bargain at the end of the day we could be a top 14 um defensively it's just the offense is that that we're going to run that's the question mark because we don't know what what um the new coach is going to run as far as offense is, is concerned um, but we know that he, he, they're looking at a lot of wing players, so they're looking at they, – there's probably going to still do that switch. Um, I mean, they're going um, to switch players. I don't really like that. I, I'd rather for you to fight through the pick and, and, and play your guys that are switching through. But I think, though, if we can, if we can go back to being a defensive-minded team, and when we were like that, we did struggle on offense, but we was always in the game at the end. So once you're in the, if you're in the game at the end, and the coaches put you in a good situation for a good play, the call to win the game, and you don't you don't make the play. That's not the coach's fault. That's the player's fault. So I, I think that I think we could be better 
than where they projecting us to be right now. Um, because if I'm if I'm if I'm the Celtics, if I'm if I'm Jason Tatum, if I'm Jalen Brown, and, and Jaylen, we know Jalen is ho- really hungry right now after being hurt um, and not being to play in the playoffs. And if you watch him on the playoffs, the guy was jittery on the sideline. He wanted to get in the game. So, you know, he's really hungry to get back out there and play some competitive football. I mean, basketball. So I think you'll see a better Jalen Brown. I think he'll be a better uh, uh, free throw shooter than he was last year. Uh, I think he'd be a better assist player than he was last year. And as we all know that he always improves every year. We just don't know where he's going to prove at. So um, I think that we have I think we have a chance. Um, we have like a Schrader who's come off the bench, who's, who's like lost out on millions and millions of dollars, but he's betting on himself. So he's going to come out and, and be the hungry player that he needs to be. And if anybody knows anything about sports, when you're a free agent, when you're, when your contract is up and you're a free agent and you're looking to get that next bag, you give 110% that year to get that money because you want that money. You want, you want to have the security, um, of getting that big bag of money. So. We can see that we can see that happening with Schrader, um, and you know, playing with playing with a chip on the shoulder because nobody else wanted to give him a chance. We brought him in here at five point nine. You know, I would love to have been in the room, Igor, when they talked to Schrader and convinced him to come to Boston for five point nine, because I think he probably could have went somewhere else and probably got more. And as he t- as as the season goes on, he'll probably talk about. It. He said I could have got more somewhere else, but I felt like this is the place I needed to be because I wanted to prove myself. Um, and for him to want to come off the bench, that says a lot about him because everybody was saying he's a selfish player. He's he's not a team player. He's not this. He's not that. So for him to come to Boston and take five point nine million dollars and to come off the bench, to me, that's not a selfish player. That's a player that's that's going to do what the team to ask him to do and to be better to better himself and to better the team. And at the end of the day, when the season's over, Boston can sit and say, "Okay, now you did what you did. Now we're going to pay you for what you've done." You know. Um, and some other team may come by and, and, and pay more, but he's going to get the money that he deserved, that he felt like he deserved to get, um, that he didn't get from, he didn't get from LA, you know? So that's kind of where I'm at with the team. Um, and, um, me personally, I'm ready to put the Bradley Bill thing to bed until it actually happens. So we see it happen. Um. I, I and, and talking to Celtic fans, that's all they want to talk about Bradley Bill. I'm like, yo, he's not on the team right now. So let's not talk about Bradley. Let's talk about who's on the team right now. That's that that's my whole thing. You know, now I got a question for you. I did they did, is Taco still on the team or did they release him as well? Because I don't see him on the on the roster. Um so, I think um, that uh, I think Ramon that v- Waters and Taco Falls are not the Celtics anymore. Celtics only okay. two-way contract only on two-way the roster is Sam Kusir. Uh, schedule is released, uh, but schedule is released, I can come up with uh, uh, thoughts to finish with uh, Bill. To finish with, uh, uh, Bill. Uh, we are hearing uh, that Golden State Warriors will heavy, heavily be in pursuing uh, Bill when he is available. Uh, they will offer Weissman Andrew Wiggins, Picks, etc. So the market will be hard for him. And about Bill and connections, Boston, to tell you the truth, Kevin, I think that uh, he would accept and resign in the big, big market uh, cities like Los Angeles, Miami, even New York, uh, if uh, they uh, trade for him. But like you said, uh, we will talk about him when it happens, if that happens. Uh, returning to Marcus Smart contract, uh, four years, 77 millions. I mean, fully deserved. Uh, Marcus Smart is uh, right now a uh, starting uh, point guard. Uh, according to Ime, Ime Udoka spoke on the Summer League. I think that our friend Bobby Manning asked him about uh, who is the starting point guard. And he mentioned that Marcus Smart wanted the starting point guard spot and he deserved that. And when you hear that uh, Celtics didn't promise Dennis Schroeder the starting point guard uh, position, then it is all making uh, sense. And you mentioned Peyton Pritchard, who is upcoming and can cover point guard position. And they can, that is uh, making you thinking that Chris Dunn uh, can be dealt. 
sooner or later uh, because uh, he is like a, a fourth point guard at um, uh, the Celtics right now. Uh, returning to the smart, I mean almost 20 million per year and now about trade, I'm, I'm not sure about tradeability of uh, that contract, Kevin, to tell you the truth. I'm expressing my reserves. For example, uh, if you pursue Bradley Bill trade, obviously, you would like to put in Marcus Mart into that deal, right? Because it is eating you and traded player exception, 17 million, 17 to 20 million. But listen, if you're Washington, uh, you want to rebuild after build, right? You're hitting the rebuilding button. And what do you want if you rebuild? Uh, do you want uh, that uh, middle value contract uh, and player that is not young anymore, but in, uh, you know, best age, to, 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 to tell that way, you know, middle age uh, men, with like 20 million uh, contract and he is not realistically having uh, too much upside maybe he's having you know but uh, marcus smart is what what he is you know i'm not seeing him to make huge leap the teams like washington that are rebuilding or New Orleans Pelicans or anybody else that 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 are rebuilding, they would prefer the young players that have high upside over Marcus Smart. You know, maybe some team uh, would would want Marcus Smart if they cannot uh, get anything else. But what I'm trying to say is that, uh, for example, I'm not sure that Washington would uh, will be crazy to take that contract. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and about Marcus Smart, again, it is des fully deserved. It is logical to extend him because he's starting point guard right now, part of the core, the longest tenured Celtics, if I'm correct, since 2015. So, uh, heart and the soul of the team. Uh, for that sum of money, 17 to 20 millions, I want to see Marcus Smart to improve in some areas. He didn't have the good year. He had injuries. He, he, his defense was down last year. So, I want his defense to be uh, stabilized. And I don't want to see him launch 10 threes per game, by no means. Uh, I want to see him to be involved in the pick and roll sets and more like traditional point guard that is assisting because I think Marcus Smart can do it. And especially with Robert Williams and Al Horford on the team. I want to see him as the true point guard. If he is open... He can launch the trees every time as far as I'm concerned. But I don't want to see him launch 10 trees, miss 10 trees, and then launch two more because he can do it. You know, <laughs> that's what I don't want to see from Marcus Matt. Uh, because there are better shooters on the team than Marcus Matt. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, obviously, even... I mean, Josh Richardson is not a good uh, three-point shooter. That is my biggest question mark about him. But Dennis Schroeder, you know, Al Horford is a really solid three-point shooter. Peyton Pritchard is really good three-point shooter. Aaron Naismith is improving in that area. In another uh, words, I want Marcus Smart to be distributor and on uh, his level on the defense. And I would be happy with, with Marcus Smart. Uh, about Robert Williams' contract, it is logical uh, that uh, we extended him now because he is hurt right now and because he started only 13 uh, games, if I'm correct, last uh, season. And the Celtics are like 9-4 and four with him starting, 
which means that he really has the huge impact on our game. He is the game changer for us defensively, really, when he is healthy. Uh, he only started 13 games, and he, he could not command like 20 millions per year contract. And to be precise, on the open market, if he is healthy, the player with his upside and potential is worth like four uh, years, 80 millions contract. So when you look from this standpoint of view, this deal is absolutely bargain, like four years, uh, 54 million. And Brad Stevens did really good job in that. Um, my question, Mark, is uh, our friend Andy mentioned that uh, this uh, uh, contract is kind of gamble because of uh, his uh, health. From what we heard from Brad Stevens is that the Celtics are really not concerned about Brad St Steve Brad, uh, about uh, Robert Williams' health. Uh, but I would be really cautious. I would count Williams to play 60, 70 games per year, and I would sign Paul Millsap. And you ask, you, uh, you ask why uh, do we need um, uh, Paul Millsap? Because uh, behind uh, Williams, we have Bruno Fernando, who is like unproven third or fourth center, uh, Taco is not with us. Uh, Grant Williams can play center. I don't like to rely on Grant Williams. He can play on the small ball and really be useful there, but he's not full-time solution. When you talk about the true centers, you have Robert Williams, Al Horford, and Bruno Fernando. And uh, only Grant Williams says potentially 4-5. Jabari Parker, I don't think that he can... Uh, play the, uh, the center even in the small ball positions. Maybe sometimes, but this is not a good solution. So Paul Millsap can play five. He can even start, start five. So, I mean, another veteran like that would absolutely stabilize the team. And if Robert Williams is out, you start Al Horford, you have Paul Millsap from the bench as the third guy alongside Grant Williams, and you're, you're fine at the positions four and five. Uh, you have Jabari Parker, uh, who, who is more like, uh, for me, three, four than four, five. So uh, that's why we would need another center addition, I'm sure, that uh, uh, unlike Brad Stevens as a coach, Ime Udoka is aware of that, and he mentioned that we need more veteran additions on the roster. And that's why I loved what I heard from Ime Udoka uh, and I loved how he formed the point guard rotations you know with the limiting money that we had on uh, that position uh, I'm not sure how much Josh Richardson could help us we will see you know maybe he can uh, maybe he can but uh, if he can't his contract is not uh, uh, hard to move, you know. Uh, so it is not like bad signing. Uh, he, he can help us. And also he can help us to be secondary playmaker because in Philadelphia he was like secondary playmaker uh, on, on the team. So it is not uh, the, the, the worst uh, roster constructions. But to, to mention that we lost Walker Fournier combo after Brad Stevens uh, prioritized flexibility during the off season, those were massive contracts, and Fournier they they went to the Knicks because Knicks have money to spend. Uh, they are like drunk millionaires. We are not. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, that's why we have Josh Richardson and Dennis Schroeder and more flexibility along the way at positions one and two. Uh, one addition at the positions four and five, and we are ready to, to go as um, uh, far as I'm concerned. Uh, if we are healthy, like you mentioned, this roster will be definitely better, like five to ten wins more than last year. I can bet in that, uh, you know... Um, Jason Tatum is a star. We will have, um, I don't know, about 22 nationally te televised games, which is good. 
which is proving you that uh, people want to see Tatum and Brown as a stars. What is not good that uh, schedule is released, and if I'm correct, uh, Kevin, uh, Boston has like 15 back-to-back -back ga games, which is the most in the NBA. Uh, and uh, can you guess uh, which two teams have the least back-to-back -back games in the league? Yes, Los Angeles Lakers, yes, Los Angeles and, Angeles Lakers the and the Lakers. The Lakers and the Nets, of course. Oh, it, they will be because they because they because they're they're the older they're older team. So, see that that's the part that that's the part that makes me mad with the NBA because you 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 you're not tra you're not very you're not trying to be very transparent about what you're doing. Now, Boston right now average age is right around twenty five. I think it is. Um, their average age is right around twenty five. Lakers average age is probably about 30, 31. Um, Brooklyn might be 29, 28, 29, somewhere around there. But the thing about it is though, how do you justify that's that uh, how do you justify giving them that many games that 15 games are back to back during the season? I, I don't understand how they can justify that that schedule. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. And it's not fair. And if it was any other team, I would be saying the same thing about them. Um, but I don't know the schedule of everybody else's team. But the Nets and the Lakers don't have that many back-to-back -back games. I wonder why. You know what I'm saying? That's the part that really bothers me how they do that. Um, it really I'm just I'm just I'm just looking at a schedule right now, and we start out with we start out um let's see, this is regular season. Um, we go to we 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 on the road. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're on the road seven out of out of ten times at the beginning of the year. Um, that's crazy. We play a back to back Houston and Charlotte, so that means we gonna play at Houston. Then we gonna fly to Charlotte. Then we come home for two days, play Washington. Then we play then we back to back Washington, home and home and away. Then we play Chicago. Then we go back on the road again. Um, Orlando, Miami, and Dallas. That's crazy right there. To, to play, to be on the road, to go from Miami to Dallas, which is a different time frame, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, Igor. It really doesn't. Um, I don't I, I really don't understand what they're doing here. And it's not fair. It's not fair, in my opinion. Even though we know that we used to look at, we, we knew a while back though that when after our star break, Boston would go on the West Coast ride. Now that's completely different. The way they have the schedule is 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 crazy, man. I'm I'm looking at this crazy. I'm like, okay, so now I'm just looking at the, the schedule. So after de December, after December third, they're on. They go. They. They go Utah, Portland, LA, LA, Phoenix. They come back home for one, two, three, four, five. They come home for five games in a row. And that's probably the longest stint they probably have at home. And on top of that, the games at the end of the at the end of the year is th three games on a row. I'm trying to figure that one out. That that's mind boggling to me. You know what I'm saying? That's that's mind-boggling to me. That that's not. It's, there's no way in the world you can sit and tell me that that's fair to 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 the NBA to the to the Boston Celtics as far as how many games they play um, on the road back to back, and at the end of the year they don't have a, they, the last home game they have is that Sunday, April the third against Washington, and then they go on the road against Chicago, Milwaukee, and at Memphis. I, Igor, it it, it 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 just irks my nerve, man. It irks my nerve. Uh, the schedule the schedule is not not good for us. Uh, let's um, let's break down some uh, key dates. Uh, first of all, the Bradley Bill temperature check is October twenty seventh, thirtieth. Celtics fans will be keep an eye on the Wizards because of Bradley Bill. Uh, if he is going to be get frustrated. The two games in four days, October 27th, 30th, essentially a draw out home and home will afford early season opportunities to 
recklessly speculate about whether Jason Tatum can eventually recruit St. Louis body to Boston to Lakers games before you even start your Christmas shopping, November 19th and December 7th. So it feels like we usually have to wait until calendar flips before getting taste of the Celtics Lakers. Now, not this season. Two meetings, November 19th, December 7th, uh, in the first 25 games, will set the tune for the rest of the season. Surviving the holidays. Listen to this. From November 24th to December 31st, this will be like the war. The Celtics play 18 games in a little more than a month be be between Thanksgiving Eve and New Year's Eve. So while you are doing your holiday shopping and resting, the Celtics will be in the hard battles. And it's stretch loaded with superstar talents and some of the league's best teams, including a night before Thanksgiving visit of Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, the most hated player in the league for the Celtics fans, and the super team Nets. Then, the seven of the next eight games on the road, including five games road trip uh, that featured Lakers and the Suns, the finalists, the only pit stop home is game against the Sixers before the Celtics head west. And this is not easy game at home. The schedule doesn't relent coming back to Boston in mid-December, including visits from the Bucks, the Champs, December 13th, the Sixers, December 20th, a rematch with Milwaukee Bucks and Sammy Ojole. Right now, the two the teams' third meeting in the early season happens on the Christmas in Wisconsin. Boston wraps up the calendar here by hosting the other NBA finalists, the Suns, uh, they come in town in New York's Eve. So we were celebrating New Year with uh, the Suns. Uh, just uh, look at the superstar talent the Celtics see in that stretch. Even beyond the Nets trio, you have Joel Embiid, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Damian Lillard, Gianni Santitucompo, Stephen Curry. Uh, it is vulnerable tool of MVP candidates. Home sweet home. Now, easy stretch. After that, from December 13, February 2nd. While early season schedule is particularly daunting, Boston does have stretch uh, in which they play 18 or 26 games at home. And this is the part in which the Celtics can catch uh, the breath and uh, climb up to the standings from December 13 to February 2nd. Because that stretch is starting in the mid-December throughout the garden heavy January. The strength of the schedule dips a bit um, the new calendar year and Boston will uh, get a pre-trade deadline chance to assess where it stands. Are the Celtics legit contenders or not uh, the trade deadline? Uh, and Super Bowl appetizer, February 13th. Boston is back to hosting day of uh, Super Bowl matinee. Uh, with Trey Young and the Hawks visiting Boston 2 p.m. Eastern at um, uh, February 13th before the Super Bowl tip-off. So the Hawks at the Super Bowl uh, day. Uh, post All-Star uh, calendar check up February 24th. Emerging from the later than usual All-Star break, which is uh, February 18th, February 23rd, the Celtics with 60 games already in rare view uh, head to uh, Brooklyn and begin the uh, final push against the East Juggernaut. Uh, a couple of Sunday matinees at the national TV uh, look uh, early uh, visit from the Nets, March 6, and Lucas Mavericks, March 13. It is not easy. On the road again, March 16, April 10. On the road, this is destiny this season because the Celtics played eight of their final 13 games away from home starting with the mid-March uh, 16, with the West Coast trip they visit. Golden State, Sacramento, Denver, Oklahoma. Not easy end of year. Then wrapping up the season on the road again with the Bulls, Bucks, and Grizzlies. Uh, by the numbers, Celtics play 15 back-to-back -back sovereign, the most in the league, only three without traveling in between. League average is 13.5 back-to-back games per team. And the Celtics are playing 15 
which is which is meaning that the Celtics are above league average in back-to-back -back games. The four conference teams that Boston plays only three times this season instead of typical four games, uh, Chicago, Miami, Cleveland, and Orlando. So three games against Chicago, Miami, Cleveland, Orlando, not four. And finally, the Celtics expected miles traveling. Kevin, 43,000 miles, about 3,000 miles more than Eastern Conference average. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm Igor, I'm looking at the strength of schedule right now. Boston is eighth in strength of schedule. Everybody, everybody above them have, was not in the playoffs. Cleveland, Orlando, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Sacramento, Houston, Detroit. None of the teams made the playoffs. So now number eight is the Celtics. Now, after that, you got San Antonio, Toronto, New York, New Orleans, Charlotte, and Golden State at 14. But at the bottom of the strength of schedule, at number 30, you have the Los Angeles Lakers, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Dallas Mavericks, the Phoenix Sun, the 76ers, the Atlanta Hawks, the Brooklyn Nets, Denver Nuggets, Utah Jazz, all made the playoffs. That's 22-30 that has the easiest schedule. How does the NBA make that, that? How does Adam Silver do this, man? I mean, this is crazy. And, you know, and the funny thing about it is I wish Red Arbach was around to, to deal with this because, I, I, you know, he would have he would have some words for, for the commissioner. You know what I'm saying? But this is crazy. I'm looking at this strength of schedule. I'm like, yo, I don't believe that they did this. You know what I'm saying? So this is why I don't like the NBA because the NBA already predicts. You are Vegas already has a prediction for the Lakers and the Nets in the finals. This goes, this, this goes right along with the story of them being in the finals because they're they're in the bottom half of the easiest schedule out there. And that's not fair. It's, it's, there's, there's, it's, it's not fair at all. And some people may say, well, there's no strength of schedule because you play everybody. It's not the difference is that you may play a team at the beginning of the year when they're healthy, and then you may play them again in the middle of the year when they're not healthy. And then at the end of the year, they've already tanked and they said, Well, we ain't got nothing to lose. We're trying to get a, a lottery pick, and there's a different that, that they so they play a different type of game. But that's the part that people don't understand that there is a strength of schedule in basketball, even though you play everybody. But this is nonsense right here. It, it just don't make any bleeping sense to me. You know, you got Miami 17. I mean, come on, man. Um, Portland's 19th. You know, it, it in 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 the middle, you got Toronto, you got New York is 11th, right? Um, which I, I which even though they added Kimba and Fournier, I think they played over their heads like last year, and I think they're gonna they're, I think everybody's gonna take them a little bit more seriously than they did this year. Um, even though I liked I liked the way they play, um, but I don't think they're going to achieve what they achieved last year because nobody's going to be surprised them. They they're going to take them seriously. Every game they play the the Knicks, there's going to be a serious game. Um, my personal opinion, like the like like uh, the Pelicans, they already know the situation that that Zion doesn't want to be there, so they're not going to put a lot of effort in trying to trade or or do anything. That that's gonna hurt the team. They basically is looking at um he doing another Anthony Davis situation, and they're gonna get some pieces from New York to do a sign and trade. Um, because if he does if he leaves there without doing a sign and trade, I think that's disrespectful to the organization. But that's a different story for a different day. But I'm looking at the Celtics. I mean, we're the we were the eighth seed in the playoffs, and we have the eighth toughest record. Everybody ab ab above us didn't make the playoffs, and now we're sitting there. It it just I I I just find it hard to believe. I find I really find it hard to believe. And the schedule is kind of easy at the beginning. Um, if I look at this, let me look at the schedule again. So if you look at the schedule from the at the beginning, they at New York, which which should be a good game. I think that's a winnable game. I think it should be Toronto. I think it should be Houston. I think it should be Charlotte. I think they should be, be able to beat Washington both times. And then you have the Chicago game. That's a game that it could be iffy. So Boston can go into one, two, three, four, five, six. They can start off six and oh, possibly, because these are all winnable games. Or, or they can go in and go into they can go to Chicago at five and one. Okay. Which which would be decent if they could get to that point. But again, 
still, I don't agree with the schedule whatsoever. Man, it just, it ain't right, man. It ain't right. But anything good don't come easy, you know. And I've always said Jason and Jalen got to feel pain in order for them to understand the success that they got to have in the NBA. Um, and if they didn't feel any pain last year by losing like they did, then something wrong with them. So they should, they should come back even hungry this season coming up. But the schedule is – I don't even. Uh, it's crazy. Even though I'm, I'm. I, even though I said I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to pay to go watch the Celtics play because of how they played last year. Um, but I, what I want to see is them be a better defensive team this year than it was last year. I'm still probably not gonna go watch them play, um, unless somebody buy me a ticket. Because other than that, I ain't going. I'm gonna watch them on TV. I got the NBA channel. So I get to see them every time. One time I don't get to see them is when they play Philly because Philly blocks them out. But I can go to a bar and watch them, watch them play Philly. But for the most part, I really wasn't happy the way the team was organized, where the team was a st- uh, assembled last year. Um, again, Brad Stevens did a better job this year. So there is some hope. I'm, I'm really excited to see how this team um, works out this year. But again, the schedule is not in their favor. And so – the bench players go the bench is gonna have to be a high priority for them to be able to win games. Um what what I would like uh, what I want to see though is I like to see Al Harford and um and Williams on the floor together. Um I would love to see that combination. I would really would love to see that combination. I think that would be good for Boston because you know Al can shoot that three. I don't know what I don't know if Williams is working on the three or not, but it doesn't really matter at this point in time. Um we just need him getting the paint, block shots, and 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 get the rebounds. And if he can get ten points off of a back uh, uh, rebound and put it back in, we're good. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully he's working on his free throw shooting as well. But yeah, I I I, I definitely want to see that combination of players, them two play together. Um, and again, the schedule ain't it ain't it ain't it ain't cool. It ain't cool shooting. I don't like it at all. And the NBA need to stop this madness because the you predict you're already predicting who's going to win for you know when the finals was over with Milwaukee Bucks wasn't even a top four or five to win next year and it had nothing nobody have changed anything on their team okay they already had Brooklyn going and they had the Lakers going which I which in my personal opinion I don't think the Lakers going I think they're too old um and they still don't have a shooter they still don't have nobody that can shoot the ball I mean they got mellow but mellow gonna give you 20 but he's going to give up 21, you know, so we'll see how that works out. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm go ahead and I'm, 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 you, you, you know, how is it going in the NBA? Uh, the teams with uh, the most superstar uh, are having uh, all necessary favor by the NBA. For example, um, Lakers need a trade. They make a trade, and the small teams are gladly gifting their stars to the Lakers for the Lakers' trash. And the people are scratching their heads how the Lakers are doing, you know. Uh, And the schedule that you mentioned is clearly showing you which which teams NBA would prefer in the finals and they are all about the ratings, you know. Uh, this is um, about it uh, because uh, the common average NBA uh, fan wants to see the biggest stars in uh, the finals. And you mentioned Lakers and the Nets. Uh, they, they are stacked with uh, the superstars and probably preferable finals. Um, on the East, they have like uh, Milwaukee Bucks and uh, Nets if healthy projected finals. We will see about that. Uh, and at the West, I, I, I don't know who is the second team. Maybe Suns. They resigned Chris Paul and, and there, but I would not um, uh, count out uh, Denver Nuggets or Los Angeles Clippers. Los Angeles Clippers had extremely good season. I loved how Tyron Rue uh, run that team, especially when they uh, uh, 
had uh, bad luck in losing Kawhi Leonard. So without Kawhi Leonard, I think that uh, Clippers did very good. And I would not count out the Clippers to be in the best conference uh, finals alongside Lakers and make up side of uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. We will see. I would say that uh, Eastern Conference is stronger than uh, Western Conference. Maybe people will laugh at me. But uh, like I mentioned, you have top four teams according to the rankings like uh, the Nets, uh, the Bucks, uh, Philadelphia 76ers, Miami. Miami is strong and improved. If I'm correct, P.J. Tucker from the champs, then Kyle Lowry, a couple of uh, guys from the bench, but uh, My Miami wants to be at least in the semifinals or Eastern Conference Finals. Then you have Boston. We talk about Boston. Then uh, that uh, group of teams that are fighting from the positions between five to eight. Uh, you mentioned Chicago. Chicago is improved as well. Uh, they have Nikola Vucevic, Zach Lavine. Uh, uh, I forgot uh, which players they signed. I think that signed a couple of uh, good free agents. I must check Atlanta Hawks. Uh, we saw that they are young and upcoming team. So Boston is not the only young and upcoming team. Atlanta is the other one with uh, Trey Young and Collins. Uh, so uh, Clint Capella, Bo Bogdanovich, my guy, and the others. So, I mean, uh, New York Knicks. You mentioned New York Knicks are not naive team anymore. Uh, do you know why, Kevin? Because they have the good coach. The good coach is 50% of uh, uh, the, 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 the job. Uh, Tim Thibodeau, he knows the job. Uh, he's not the best offensive coach, but uh, he's defensive guru, absolutely. And he knows how to drain all the people and make them to work hard. If the people are not working hard, he's just kicking, him, kicking them out. Uh, he improved Julius Randle and make him an all-star. And they're building the team around Julius Randle. They address to their weaknesses because they have Reggie Lewis as good guy that I love outside at position number three as a shooter, kind of. They have Derrick Rose, but Derrick Rose never was a shooter. He was a drive and dish point guard, you know. Uh, but they have Kemba Walker and Fournier who can shoot right now. Uh, so they have a couple of good bigs inside alongside Randall. Uh, they can beat absolutely everybody uh, if uh, they are all healthy and in sync, you know. Uh, they have deeper bench uh, right now. Uh, Washington, we didn't mention them. Um, I had... Uh, Previously, prior to your talk, um, the list of their players, they signed Spencer Dinvidi from uh, the Nets. Uh, so their starting gu gu guard is, point guard is Spencer Dinvidi. Uh, Bradley Bill Hajimura, Montezzi Harrell is there, Davis Bertans, and um, I mean, if Bill is hot, they can make some upside, but realistically, uh, battle for position number eight. Chicago improved on the paper. I'm not sold on them alongside Detroit. I think that they will be out of the playoffs uh, again. Uh, maybe they will surprise me and make me look bad. But uh, I am putting Charlotte Hornets with my man, Terry Rozier. And by the way, I'm congratulating Terry Rozier to, to like uh, four years, 97 minutes, if I'm correct with the best career year in efficiency, in assistance, in, I mean, the man is incredible. And I'm really happy for him, by, by, by the way. So I'm putting Charlotte ahead of Chicago, ahead of Cleveland, ahead of those guys, especially because uh, they have um, Gordon Hayward, uh, who I don't know if he is going to be healthy or not, uh, similar to Williams and Walker. But um, they have a couple of good young guys. And even without Gordon Hayward, they are a playoff team. 
to conclude, I think that uh, Eastern Conference is definitely improved. Uh, top four teams, uh, everybody addressed their needs. Um, and even middle teams improved and the Celtics improved according to their uh, possibilities. You know, the free agency market, their cap situation, their long-term plans. Uh, so, I mean, it will be interesting season for the Celtics uh, fans. Uh, interesting to watch because I think uh, we will have hopefully less injuries and more fun and more good games, you know. Uh, I think that uh, Kevin, this year is a bridge year for us and we are about developing the young guys on the roster and especially uh, to see if our core players uh, and we know who, uh, who, 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 which are the core players, Tatum, Brown, Williams and Smart. It is obvious. That it is no secret. Uh, we want them to improve and hopefully one of them or two of them to reach uh, the next level. Andy mentioned, and I'm sorry that he is not with us, that um, Williams' contract is kind of uh, Robert Williams' contract, not Grant Williams' contract. Robert Williams' contract is kind of a gamble. I don't know about the team options, to tell you the truth. Uh, does he have some clauses about the games played because since 2018 draft he played 113 games accumulated so because of that start uh, he could not ask for uh, like full max rookie extension or even 20 millions per year uh, money and boston was able to lock him for four years 54 millions. It is looking big, but it is not big considering what you said, Kevin, that the salary cap hopefully will rise in the next years and it depends on the successful season, on the COVID strikes, is public allowed to the games or not, and uh, that kind of stuff. So it is all, all having influence on the salary cap. So if cap is rising, uh, that sum of money, 13 millions, is less percent occupied in the Celtics cap. This is simple math. If cap is higher, then 13 millions is a uh, smaller percent of the salary cap, which is good for the Celtics. So all is about the health for Williams. And you mentioned three-point shooting. I want him to develop mid-range shooting. I saw that he can shoot the mid-range shooting. I want him to develop Paul Pierce elbow jumper. And he will be really, really good player. He has the pass. He can be even passer from the high post. He's a very intelligent player. And like I mentioned, he is defensive uh, Defensive uh, anchor, defensive game changer. There is no player on the Celtics roster that is having such athleticism and upside, including Jason Tatum as Robert Williams when he is healthy. What he's doing on the floor when he is healthy and uh, in the mood is incredible. And that's why the Celtics pay 13 million per year or the potential of what Robert Williams can be in the future. And uh, is Robert Williams starting potential for the cell? Absolutely. That's what you and me and Andy and Danny uh, were saying the whole season to Mr. Brad Stevens, uh, who preferred to start uh, Daniel Tice or even Grant Williams or the other guys when Robert Williams was healthy and available, which is something that I don't understand. And even he was keeping uh, Robert Williams on some minute restrictions, okay, because of injuries. But you know, Kevin, sometimes you must play the player larger than the restrictions because he's young and he need, need minutes to develop. 
uh, how Robert Williams is going to develop if he's not playing. There is no way. On the practices, you cannot make a progress uh, just like when you're doing progress when you're playing. Even when you're playing bad, you're learning and you're making progress. So Robert Williams needs time, practices, and he will make progress. He had really high potential and upside. I'm really happy that we extended him and I'm really hoping uh, for the big things about him. Before I continue, do you want to say something or some questions? Uh, we didn't receive questions, but um, uh, do you want to add something on my story? Um, I, I totally agree with you on that. I think that, that we've looked at uh, Robert Williams and, and you know, when he first got there, he wasn't, he, he missed the plane, he came to meetings late and things of that nature. And, but when you're one year removed from high school, um, it's a big adjustment, okay? And he had to make that adjustment. And now he, now that he made the adjustment mentally, he got to make the adjustment physically. Um, if you if you look at some pictures of him, you can see that he's getting some definition in his arms. He's getting, he's getting, he's getting a muscle. He's getting one of those things here. He's getting that. He bit, his chest is getting bigger. You know what I'm saying? So it all takes time for him to develop into that player that we want him to be um, coming up this year. So we're, we're, we're the subject has said, we gave you this money. Now we want to see you be the player that you need to be. Okay. So and that's what they're basically saying to him. Um, and I think that he going to, I think he's ready to rise to the occasion. And like uh, Igor said that he'd like to see him hit the little tweener, um, the elbow jumper. And if you guys, if you guys really think back, really, really think back when we had Perkins, that's the only thing Perkins couldn't do was he couldn't shoot the, he couldn't shoot the jump shot at the, the elbow. And that's why they got rid of him, and they brought in um, uh, old boy from um, the Pacers, O'Neal, because um, he could shoot the jumper. You know what I'm saying? So if 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 Robert could develop that right there, that makes him even better because now he has to be defended at the at the foul line, and then he could hit fake and go in and, and dunk the ball, lay the ball up. So that brings another added um, versatility to the game um, for him to do what he's doing. So. What Igor is saying is perfectly is, – is on point when it comes to um, Robert Williams. The person I'm really looking to see step up is Nate Smith. I need to see him be a young Ray Allen type of player with defense. Um, I think Pritchard going to bring it to you. But I think Pritchard's going to bring it because Pritchard, he has that nastiness about him. Um and people counting by the size, but the guy can shoot the ball. He can shoot the lights out the ball. Um, but Nate Smith is the guy that I'm really, really looking at to develop into that jump shooter that we need in that corner that could be the, the, the young Ray Allen. Um, so hopefully he can he can develop that and help the bench play because that's the, where we've been hurting for the most is our bench has not been the bench that we needed to play. And we don't have no veterans. So we've all this has been addressed during the all season. So now we just had to put it together and find out what's going to happen come October. Igor, I think Igor froze on me a little bit here. Um, I'm okay. here. I'm no, here. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I, I mean, uh, the next season, I think, uh, should be. Uh, pivotal for the Celtics uh, and uh, our hopes. Again, uh, I hope that uh, what is the most important for our franchise, uh, and by the way, uh, for my man Nemanja, thanks for watching us uh, at the Celtics Talk Radio page. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm pivotal season for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. First of all, I really hope that Jalen Brown will be returned. He is injured and as soon as it is possible. And I hope that he can get into his form. We need him uh, as soon as it is possible because realistically he is option number two. And especially after we lost Walker and Fournier, uh, there is no real firepower on this team, Kevin. This is the huge, uh, I mean, maybe the biggest problem. We don't have enough points 
uh, you know, in systematic uh, uh, half care tokens. Uh, so option number three, we will see who is uh, maybe smart, uh, you know, maybe Williams if, if, if healthy or uh, the, the, the new uh, Josh Richardson can be there hopefully as a starter, as option three or four, it will be really good. Uh, and from the bench, you mentioned Dennis Schroeder. Uh, we really need him to go and uh, uh, Al Horford, uh, hopefully that uh, he will contribute in that uh, department, not only defense and rebounds, but uh, he can give us some boost from the bench because he need him. to. And also the guys that we saw at the Summer League, we can expect improved uh, points from them, like uh, Peyton Pritchard, uh, who scored like uh, 92 points in exhibition game. The people are still talking about it. So we're expecting Peyton Pritchard to be like, uh, maybe go to guy from the bench. Why not? Uh, even before uh, Dennis Schroeder and to be the scorer, Aaron Naismith. I really love Aaron Naismith because he is two-way player. He can play defense, he can play offense, and he can do a little of uh, the things that Gordon Hayward was doing um, in, 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 in Jersey. Romeo Langford, I don't know what to think about his jumper, Kevin, because he kind of changed a little, uh, coaching staff kind of changed a little his jumper. His jumper was falling in in the summer league, but I feel like uh, this jumper can start to uh, fall out, <laughs> you know. Uh, but defensively, Romeo Langford is excellent. Uh, Grant Williams uh, can be useful if his trees is uh, falling in. He's like semi modular guy, like corner trees and strong defense. He can be useful in the small ball uh, options. But I'm more looking forward Jabari Parker than Grant Williams at position number four. And... Uh, I would try even, uh, of course, we have Al Horford who can play small ball five, but um, I would try to play Jabari Parker ahead of uh, Grant Williams because I think that uh, Jabari Parker has higher upside and, I mean, he, he's better talent than Grant Williams at all. Uh, all at all, again, one more big guy, and I think we are ready to go. Maybe we will, uh, we have Sam Husir as one two-way contract. We have room for another uh, two-way contract, and definitely, like you mentioned, even if we don't if we don't sign Paul Millsap, then you can expect during the season Celtics to sign veteran guy, potentially big man or power forward power forward center, something like that. And more moves to come. I think that this team will be active, especially at the trade deadline. We saw that Brad Stevens is not hesitant to make a move, you know. Uh, his new GM, and I think it's all interesting to him, you know. So we can, we can see potentially the trader Brad, uh, you know, a scenario at the trade deadline. So um, I'm really looking forward to the season. And again, I uh, underline the most important is Marcus Smart to try to become the true point guard, Jason Tatum to try to have another leap. And some other time we can talk about Jason Tatum and what he needs to improve to be the true superstar. Uh, Brown to return from injury and to return from the form. And... Uh, Josh Richardson to be option four and five, you know, to be hustle player at the defense, uh, to to cover the players that are carrying the offensive burden, like Brown and Tatum, and to cover them in the defense. Um, and potentially, you know, to give us like 10, 12 points per game, I would be really happy with Josh Richardson addition. Uh, Dennis Schroeder can be wild card, can be really pleasant surprise because, like you said, uh, he's playing with the chip on his shoulders. I'm really happy because of uh, Al Horford. I think that he can be really helpful 
on the court, off the court, in the locker room as a leader, uh, small ball five, the shooter, pick and roll, uh, center, whatever you want him to do. I just hope that he is going to stay healthy in the playoffs. And he will be really, really, really useful. And because of the health issues that I mentioned, that's why I would like Paul Milson. That's a little about the roster. You have something to add, Kevin, or a question? Question? No, I'm good. You pre you pretty much hit on everything um, that I would hit on. Um, I, I, now, I'll tell you what, though. I think the Sam Hauser kid from Virginia, um, I would like to see I like. I know he's a two-way player. Um, and I think that um, because of the schedule they have, I think they need to bring him up at the beginning of the season. Moving, I mean, you could probably get rid of Grant Williams now because he's a better he's a better shooter than Grant Williams is from the three point line. Grant Williams is more of a streaker. Um, he reminds me of Leon Poe. He he just he does whatever he, you need him to do. You know he don't he, he's not good at one thing. He's great at everything else. You know what I'm saying? So if they were to get rid of him, I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't be mad about it. But I'd like to see this kid from Virginia get some playing time. I think he's I think he's a special kid. Um, I think he can, you know, and he's and the thing about this, I think he did four years at 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 Virginia. So he's mature enough that he's already at that stage where he's already can shoot. He he plays a little good, he plays a little defense. And actually he's he's a big guy. Actually, he's really big up in the chess area. So I would love to see him. That's the only one I would love to see get some playing time other than everybody else that you talked about. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, just to say, I think that uh, guys uh, from our summer league, like um, summer league roster, uh, young mother we mentioned signed with Partizan Belgrade, uh, Begarin with uh, Paris Basket, and uh, guy like uh, Arnas Velička has signed with Napoli Basket in Italy. That's about our summer league uh, roster. We respect maybe one more player, so we are good to go. Uh, 59 or 58 days remaining until the season starts. Uh, Summer League is behind us. I think, Kevin, that uh, Summer League team really did well, despite disappointing loss in the finals. But uh, we saw the potential of the guys, and I think that we enjoyed in the performance overall. I think that the Summer League coach uh, did a good job. And kudos to him as well as our guys. Uh, so pretty much... We can be satisfied with the summer. Uh, Brett Stevens, like you mentioned, with probably advices from uh, Danny Ainge. I think that uh, he's still involved, like you mentioned. Um, did really brave uh, moves. And people need to understand that uh, Brett Stevens is operating under the frame that uh, the ownership group is giving him. So I had question from, uh, let me read you because this is, uh, let it be the last thing that we are discussing on the show. Uh, one of my, my friends, uh, he sent me the Brett Stevens's words from the press conference in which uh, he says that he is going to cross the tax line. And indeed, we are over the tax line before signing William 6.6 .6 million um, per year. Uh, and he answered to one question that he avoided uh, to be hard kept because he didn't have the green light to be hard kept. If Boston is tax paying team, Kevin, the next season, 
2021st, 22nd, and most likely we will be. 90% we will be, unless we make some huge trade of load the players like we did with Tice, you know, at the trade deadline. I would not be surprised, but uh, I suppose that we will be like 10, 15 million taxpayers this season. Then expect the next year, 2022nd, 23rd, not to be taxpaying team. Because uh, I think that we, our ownership group is uh, trying to avoid the repeater tax by all costs. A repeater tax is, uh, for example, is um, usual tax uh, if you are taxpaying team two years in a row is like uh, two and a half dollars for every dollar over the cap. Then the repeater tax is like five dollars for every dollar over the cap. Then it is going like seven and a half dollars, ten, twelve dollars. So it's really, really huge, man. And if the Celtics fans are expecting the Celtics ownership group to pay like 50 plus millions tax, then they are on some drugs, I think. And they should get off the drugs. Uh, I must say it that way. There is absolutely no chance that to happen. Like I mentioned, in one year, we are 15, 20 million stop into the tax territory. The next year, we will not be the tax paying team because we want to avoid the repeater tax. I think pretty much that that's how we operate and that's how it is. And this is the frame in which Brett Stevens is operating. Because, I mean, you should not blame Brett Stevens for the moves because he's having tax limitations in which he's doing. And again, we must give him positive mark. Uh, A minus, B plus, whatever. But he really did what he needs to do. One more signing and that's it. Uh, and I think that we cover all the bases. Do you want something to add, Kevin? Yeah, um, I think with Brad Stevenson, the, the money that, that was out there, he did the best he could do with, with what he had as far as the money is concerned. So if you look at if you look at the situation, he did a, he did an outstanding job of moving players around. And that that 17 million dollars, that's if, if, if you really don't know how huge that is for the future of the Celtics right now, um, that is humongous because they didn't have that before that. You know, and they sat down and with the, the Eric Fournier going to the Knicks, and that got that seventeen million dollar exception. That is really huge for him to, for that to happen. So Brad Stevens made more; he made money from money that he didn't even have. And I'm, I'm gonna say this: scared money don't make no money. You know what I'm saying? So um, if, if 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 you if you come back and see that they sign somebody and they're over the cap. You can pretty much say that Boston's trying to go all out within the next two 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 years. This year, next year, they're going all out to get a winning team to to, to compete at the NBA Finals, not the Eastern Conference Finals, but the NBA Finals. Um, and with the money that Brad Stevens had right now, and what he did with it, and how he made it, how he made it work for him and the organization. If I'm the owners, I'm looking at this saying, "Wow, you did all of this." Okay, well, we'll give you some. Let's let's go over the threshold. Let's let's go. Let's 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 go a little bit closer to the max or, or whatever the case may be. If you can do that and bring in the quality players that you brought in, and again, he we went from eighth to fifth, which I think we are right there between three and four, in my opinion, with the team we have right now. And if we add Millsap, we're definitely um, four, we three or four. I'm, I'm I gotta say that I think we are three or four um, with Millsap on the team, but. The little bit that he got, he made it work, you know, and it's like you having a paycheck and you got to pay all your bills. And at the end of your paycheck, you still got to buy groceries, got to buy gas. And at the end of it, you look at your paycheck and you got $200 left over. You're like, oh, I'm good. I still got $200. I can go to the movies. I can buy my girl some flowers. I can buy my kids some a, a pair of sneakers. 
So you, so the money that they gave you, you use it the best way you know how, and you left still, still left some money on the table. So I gotta give Brad an A on that right there because he only working with what they gave him. If they give, if they say to him, Brad, you have an open checkbook, then the moves he made this year will probably be completely different. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think that's, you know, I, I, I commend him on what he did. Um, I don't know if Danny Ains would have thought that far in advance. Um, we don't know, but I, I still think that Danny is in his ear a little bit about certain things. But for him to be a rookie GM and to make the moves he's making, you guys got to – the, the future, future for the Celtics are looking bright. And I'm not talking this for this year. I'm talking about years to come because um, we all know that we don't really get a lot of free agents come to Boston. We draft guys, and they come and stay forever sometimes and win a title that way. Um, you know what I'm saying? You know, we – if the Bradley Bill situation happens, then you might see a couple guys come 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 through. Um, but I think they're trying to build. I think what Brad Stevens is trying to do is build a dynasty. And Danny Ainge had the opportunity to do it. But if you remember um, the guard that um, I can't think of his name right now, left left Boston and went to the Grizzlies. Um, Tony Allen. Uh, Tony Allen. Tony Allen. He messed the he messed the whole scenario up because if Tony Allen would have stayed with Boston, they definitely would have could have they could have repeated again um, as NBA time NBA champs. They could have won three in a row. Even though even though that that uh, Kevin Garnett got hurt, Ray Allen was just I mean uh, Tony Allen was just that good of a defensive player, and Mark Smart was basically coming to his own. You had two great defensive players on that team. But Tony Allen kind of messed that whole thing up right there because he was he was start he was basically getting the bench together to be competitive and you know at some point in time guys want their money when they want their money you know and the funny thing about it is Tony Allen's mom was even upset with him when he left Boston so that's that guy say something to you about the move that he made but other than that guys I, that's what I, I, I have for y'all I, I think that he wanted I think to start wanted you know, to start, you know? Boston yeah. could not provide him that and provide even money that. like Exactly. That's it. So you know, I'm pretty much done, Igor. If you're done, and um, I don't. When's, do we know when our next show might be? Yes. Uh, the next. Yes, uh, the, I think the then is scheduled. The then is scheduled for 28 uh, August. That is Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern. The Celtic Stock Radio Show. We organize this show to uh, break you down uh, signings of Marcus Smart, Robert Williams, Summer League and, and breaking down the schedule. And 28, we will talk more about the schedule. And I think, Kevin, that we covered uh, all the bases. We didn't forget to mention Sam Kusir on the two-way deal. We didn't forget Jan Mader, who had exceptionally good... Uh, summer league as well that he is in partisan belgrade he's in good um, hands kevin because he will be coached by the best uh, euroleague coach or one of the best euroleague coaches so he will make a progress there if he stays healthy of course and you mentioned that Brad Stevens improved our potential and i totally agree uh the next year you should just look as a bridge year. And then from summer 2022nd, I think will be key and potentially 2023rd will be key for the Celtics to become the true contenders. That's it from us. I hope that 28 Andy and Danny will join us. By the way, I hope that Danny is okay and hope that he will contact us tomorrow. And when Danny is uh, ready, we will upload this show to the YouTube. Thanks for watching us. We are Kevin, Igor, Celtic Stock Radio crew. We bleed green. And we love you all. And go Celtics. <laughs>